customer is never going to know. Just steal a couple things. We could have resold this iPhone for like hundreds of dollars. You never have any idea what a customer is trying to do. You never know the angle of what somebody might try to do to you. And while you're at a job, there's a lot of different things that are being planned behind the scenes that you have no idea about. Whether it goes from a customer saying, oh, it's not that bad, but it really is bad to, you know, they're trying to haggle you down to prices. Even though they know how bad their vehicle is, they don't want to tell you exactly how bad. Or they don't want to tell you how bad the area they live in, obviously, because maybe they don't want to feel bad about themselves. But you never know what is truly going on behind your customer's mind. And in this situation, me and Akai, we were doing a mobile detailing job. Everything is super simple, super clean, uh, except the car was not very clean, but we got it very clean. Uh, probably one of the worst vehicles I've ever seen. And we did not get compensated exactly for how bad it was. But there was something in the car. It was an iPhone 15 underneath the seat, right? We figured, right, okay, maybe the person just left it there. Maybe they have no idea that they left it there or second case scenario the customer actually leaves it in the car to see if we steal it if you need help keeping up with customers sending estimates invoices or collecting payments from all of your customers for free then check out quota in the app store and the google play store or you can try any paid tier right now for just one dollar at myquotaq.com which is going to be the first link in the comment section and the description also if you sign up for any tier for a year using my link you're going to get a free coaching call with me because, I mean, they know they know our names, they know who I am, uh, or they could find a way to contact me, or they could find a way to report me to the police, especially for something like stealing someone's iPhone. My first assumption was that the customer was recording us to see if we said anything about the vehicle, because whenever the customer tells me the car is not that bad, and then me and whoever's helping me detail are inside of it, we're going to be saying some things. We're going to be like, dude, this car is disgusting. How have you not cleaned this? How long? How are you leaving your car this dirty for this long? And how do you not actually care about it? So there was a lot of stuff going through our minds. And first case scenario, do not steal from your customers. Your customers may leave quarters out. Your customers may leave dollars out. Your customer might leave a $20 bill on the seat waiting for you. Or your customer might leave an iPhone 15 waiting for you, not recording you, but waiting for you to actually test you and see if you steal it to see, okay, how good are these guys? Should I actually hire them back out? Is this someone that I want to work with long term? Because whenever you're detailing for people that have money, these are people that could be very recurring jobs for a long amount and long distance of time. Truthfully, you could have this guy, you could detail their car every couple months. You could de you could even do every two months detailing their car, which if you're charging about $150 to $200 per detail, you're going to be making good money, especially assuming this is one customer that you're actually just milking uh, over and over. So in this scenario, we could have done a lot of things. We could have stole the iPhone, right? It would be a couple hundred dollars. I mean, truthfully, if you found an iPhone that you could, you know, maybe just reset and sell on the internet, like you could have stole that person's iPhone and that job would have been worth some serious cash and it would have been great. You could have stole this person's iPhone and you honestly would have made a good bit of money just, you know, whatever, reselling it. But in this scenario, we think, and I'm very, very, very certain that the customer was aware of what they had left in the car, left underneath the seat and left it their own purpose to actually test us. Now, if we would have stolen the iPhone 15, I mean, I, would they have actually been able to find us? I don't know. But I think that worst case scenario, this person now knows who I am. They could contact the police. They could say, hey, listen, this person stole this out of my vehicle. Even though we were there to be doing a service and they let me in their vehicle completely uh, compliant, but... There's a lot of scenarios there that the customer was testing us to make sure that we were actually good people. We were actually people they wanted to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars with because every time you're going out there, I was doing two vehicles for them, actually three vehicles for them. So these people paid me almost the entire worth of that iPhone that we would have stolen. And they were testing to see, hey, listen, should we actually bring these guys back out? And I think that a lot of the times customers are actually going to do this to you. They're going to leave dollar bills everywhere. They're going to actually leave money or something tangible that maybe you could take to see if you're a good person, to see if it's worth having you back out or someone that you could trust. You're going through all of their personal belongings. The customer, maybe somewhere down the line, could actually leave something in the car that they did not mean to, and you completely steal it and you're gone, and they think that maybe they lost it or whatever. People don't want to be in that situation, especially people with money want to make sure that the people they're working with, colluding with, are not doing stuff dirty behind their backs that they don't want to have people around them like that that are going to be stealing from them or people that are going to be covering up using a service to rob them. I think a lot of people are scared. Whenever my marketing gets new people, people are scared to like actually understand that I'm a legit, I'm a real business owner. They can see that I've done a ton of jobs. They can see that I've thanked all these customers through my Facebook, whatever it is. 
a lot of these people are scared because there's so many scammers out there. These people could give me their address through our through my marketing platform or through the messaging, and I could go and rob them, or I could do whatever I wanted if I was not a legit person. So you have to understand that these customers are real people, and they want to make sure that you're a real person too, and they will test you. So do not steal from your customers. Even if you think that they would have no idea that you took it, even if you think that they it's a, just a couple quarters that they're not going to know, and it could be the difference between you losing the job or having the job, and this person could be the connect that gives you five more cars, 10 more cars, 20 more cars. So the $20 bill that you just took lost you thousands of dollars that you could have made from this person knowing, hey, this is a really good guy. They do great quality. They're really fast. And they don't steal anything. They're not bad people. They're not going to go through your car and look for stuff that you might have left in there while they're cleaning it because that is the most vulnerable situation for a person or for a client. The wrong thing and decided to steal that person's iPhone, they would have known, I guarantee you, and it would have been reported. It would have been a problem. would have looked really bad for my business. Uh, they probably would have gone everywhere and said, hey, listen, do not work with this guy. So in turn, maybe I made a thousand dollars from selling that iPhone, split it with the other person, but how much money would I have lost? It would have destroyed my actual business because why? would anyone else let me in their vehicle to clean their car knowing that hey this guy might steal anything you i could take their radio out of the car so whether or not they were testing us do not steal from your customers we returned the iphone we said hey listen you left this underneath the seat and she said oh thank you so much she didn't give me any sort of clear answer clear response that she purposely left it but that is what i think the scenario is and customers are testing you don't fail if you're looking to start your trash can cleaning business, you're in the right spot. Thanks so much for checking out my school community. Let me tell you about a couple of the things you're going to get when you do join. First and foremost, I'm going to give you guys my A to Z guide on how you can start a trash can cleaning business and do it yourself. Secondly, I'm going to teach you guys the exact pricing strategy that I've used to land each and every customer, get the best responses you can. You're also going to get my step-by-step -step guide on how I was able to land $10,000 of trash can cleaning and mobile detailing customers all for free. And then I'm going to give you guys the before and after pictures that I use so that you can use them to land these customers yourself. Also, we're going to be doing live q and so that I can answer any particular questions you guys do have. There's a forum that you can submit questions in that we have direct access to answer. And there's a ton of different guys in here trying to start the same service businesses that you are, trying to make a ton of different money just like you. It's also not only trash can cleaning. I do offer many other services, pressure washing, mobile detailing, lawn care. And I'm going to be giving you guys all kinds of game on how you can start your business, what equipment you need, how much you need to charge, and how you can make tons of money. So if you're serious about getting started and you want to join a community of like-minded people, hit the button down below and join today.